G'day, it's Jamie, and welcome to Tantanula Tigers. Today, I'm reading an old newspaper article about a thylacine, or thylacaleo, or European wolf shooting at Willa Malka, South Australia, in 1919. So we'll get into it. This was published in Hobart's World on Thursday, the 20th of February, 1919, titled... Was it the Bunyip, an extraordinary beast shot at Willamalka? An occurrence reminiscent of the notorious Tantanula Tiger episode has stirred the residents of Willamalka and Kadena, South Australia. For more than nine months, there has been a scourge in the neighbourhood of Willamalka that has played havoc with the flocks. The animal that was responsible for the killing of the sheep was variously described as a wolf and as an immense fox or as the fancy of the narrator dictated. Awful wolf-like howls were heard from time to time and it is alleged that the animal attacked farmers on several occasions during the hours of darkness. The result was that a reward of £10 was offered for the brute, which was said to be big enough to devour children. For months, the residents of the district repeatedly lay in wait or went out to hunt the animal, but without success. The end of the chase. At last, Mr D Tully, who is share farming in the district, was able to dispose of the brute. For 21 nights, he was on alert near dams and water troughs, but without avail. Similar disappointment was met when he employed a pack of staghounds and greyhounds, splendid fox hunters, who refused to tackle the animal. On another occasion, he chased the creature on horseback, but when he got within 30 yards, the horse caught the strong odour of the beast and bolted back. Ultimately, Mr Tully caught the tiger by the foot in a trap just near a fence. The brute was so ferocious that he could not approach it, so he gave it a barrel of his gun. Thinking he had killed it, he went forward, and the beast leaped at him with an open mouth. Fortunately, the chain of the trap held, and the weight attached became entangled in the fence. The animal made another spring, and Mr Tully fired point blank down its throat. An extraordinary brute. The animal weighed fully 70 pounds and was four feet six inches long from the point of the nose to the tip of the tail and stood two feet three inches in height. The remarkable thing about it was its extraordinary depth of chest and extremely powerful neck. The head was rather wide and somewhat short with pricked ears. The skin was brindle, the hair coarse and medium length and lines of wavy black and tan alternated on the rump and the forelegs. The tail of the creature was short and bushy. Nothing like it has ever been seen in the district before. The animal was a female, and a litter of its pups was found near a culvert at the railway last year, where the young had been drowned by floodwaters. Conjectures of various kinds are rife the weight of opinion being in favour of a cross between a domesticated animal and a fox. It has been suggested that the mysterious beast is a result of a cross between a fox and a wolfhound, but the only hound of that description in the district is white. Mr Tully intends to take the skin of the tiger to the Adelaide Museum. The end. Well, this is really interesting. I really have no idea what this creature is. Um, it's probably a European wolf, but it could have been a thylacine or a thylacaleo. Uh, they're describing it as a wolf or as an immense fox. Uh, they heard awful wolf-like howls. Um, Mr Tully uh, put a pack of staghounds and greyhounds to attack it, and they refused to go near the animal. And then he was chasing it on horseback one day, and when he got within 30 yards of it, the horse caught the strong odour of the beast and bolted. Um, but he finally caught the tiger in a foot trap and uh, he said it was so ferocious that he couldn't approach it, so he shot it. 
and he thought he killed it, and he went forward, and the beast leaped at him with an open mouth, and then it made another spring, so he fired at point blank range and finally killed it. He said it weighed 70 pounds, was four feet six inches long from the um, point of the nose to the tip of the tail, and stood two feet three inches. It had an extraordinary depth of chest and extremely powerful neck. The head was rather wide and somewhat short with pricked ears. The skin was brindle, the hair coarse and medium length, and lines of wavy black and tan alternated on the rump and the forelegs. The tail of the creature was short and bushy. It was a female and they found pups at the railway uh, last year, and, but they died in floodwaters. And they think it's a cross between a, um, a domesticated animal or a fox, or a cross between a fox and a wolf hand. Well, uh, foxes cannot breed with dogs. So that's ruled out. But I'd love to know whether it's a thylacine, a thylacaleo, or a European wolf. But uh, when they said like the, about the, uh, te- the, the coat of the animal, with lines of wavy black and tan alternated on the rump and the forelegs, is really interesting. Okay, that's it for me. I'll get back to you all next time. Bye.